Bobo, do you want to introduce the vlog? Want to say hi? <coughs> Did you miss me while I was gone? Yes, oh. Kisses. Okay. Well, give mommy a chance to succeed. I'm a working mom. Okay, so I've seen a lot of you in the comment section asking how I make my dog's food because I make my dog's food from scratch. I make it every week. Since we swapped over to doing a homemade diet, I have noticed that it has cleared up. Bobo, for the love of God, man. I've noticed that, but I've noticed that it's cleared up a lot of their like sort of internal allergy issues. I'm not a veterinarian or a doctor um, or an expert, but from what I understand, some dogs can have underlying allergies and they can be, the allergies can be antagonized by an unhealthy gut or a type of food that's not necessarily breaking down cleanly in the dog's stomach. Um, so with Bubs, we were dealing with, he was overweight and particularly grumpy and I think that's just his personality disorder, but anyways, he was overweight. We were spending like $80 a week on food, which is like a little bit much to be spending on food, buying him like raw dog food that's like pre-made, frozen, whatever. Um, and he was having a lot of allergic problems, like he was licking his paws, he had really yeasty paws. He was shaking his head a lot and had some sort of like ear itching infections and we took him to a specific vet who like specializes in ear, nose and skin for dogs. And she said that we might help with his obesity and his itching and his ears if we took him to a pet dietitian. So we went and we saw this doctor, I think his name is Morgan. He's super cool, like a really nice guy. He chatted with me for hours. He's really compassionate. He cares about dogs like enjoying the food that they're eating as much as benefiting from the nutritional values of it. And I learned a lot from this guy. I actually learned that most dog foods, kibbles and things like that, don't have to be, like human food has to be approved by a, a government entity as being edible and good for us. Dog food doesn't. Dog food can literally cause dogs to have cancer and die and not be nutritious and they don't care. And that's pretty sad. And so, you know, in order for my dogs to live their best lives and for longevity and things like that, I did a blood test for uh, Bubs and we figured out what was going on internally and what was good for him, what was bad for him. And then we started um, trying out different meal plans. And the one that we've landed on that really works for him and really works for Icky is a fish-based diet. He eats tilapia. Yes, tilapia is fine to feed your dogs, but don't do anything without talking to your vet first because different dogs react differently to different things. So like some dogs do really well on a turkey diet. Um, Frenchies don't do well with poultry. So when they were on a turkey diet, Icky had dark red stains under his eyes or from, uh, from his like watery eyes. But since we put Icky on the fish diet, his dark stains have totally cleared up and he's had a lot less issues with his yeasty sort of, uh, his skin has a tendency to be yeasty. So this has helped clear that up for Icky as well. Um, but talk to your vet before you decide on a meal plan because the portion is also specific for your dog's size and your dog's need. So we literally weigh out everything that we give Bubs in the meal each week. Same with Icky, they have two separate bowls that we keep the food in the fridge in and they're different because they have different needs. On top of that, we have supplements that we got and those supplements were specifically chosen for Bubs' uh, blood type and like what he really needs. And we give him a couple of um, joint supplements on top of it. My vet just said that she starts giving her dogs joint supplements when they're like two years old to start combating arthritis early. Specifically for Icky, these are really good because French Bulldog's bodies are stupid, <laughs> which is a nightmare. Gosh, I'm so winded. I don't know. I get, I'm, I'm like, I get kind of jazzed to talk about this 
because I'm the weird girl at the party who used to be like, oh, does your dog have a hooded vulva too? But it's like, we all have our things. My dogs are my things. I love them so much. So getting to talk about their like health journey and the way that we care for them, like I'm passionate about it. I really think that if you can, cooking for your dog once a week makes their life better. Their poops are better, they're more regular, their farts don't smell weird, they're happier. Bub's lost a considerable amount of weight and now every time we go to the vet they're like, what is it, hot dog season? Like, skinny bitch summer? Like, what's up? Like, this dog is so sexy, he's felt, he's like, ready for the runway. And he's happier, he's not shaking his head all the time, he's not licking his paws obsessively. And the same is true with Icky, like it cleared up a lot of Icky's yeast problems. In addition to shampoos and special mousses, Icky has his own allergy issues. And we're actually about to go down that road with him because he broke out in hives, or what I thought was hives, and hives can be really bad, so you take them to the vet, blah, blah, blah. Icky doesn't actually have hives. He's having an allergic reaction to dog dander. My motherfucker is allergic to dog dander. He's a dog that's allergic to dog, I don't get it. Anyway, that being said, this is my dog food recipe for Mr. Bubs. He gets broccoli, oatmeal, zucchini, carrots, and then these three supplements. The Balance It Carnivore Blend, the Omega-3 Pet for medium to large breed dogs, and safflower high linoleic oil. And all of these things were put together, this entire recipe was put together by a veterinary professional. He specifically studies diets for dogs, and um, he this is his life, this is his joy, this is his passion. And I did not come up with this on my own, um, but it does really work for my family. And what used to be like an $80 trip to the pet store to get fancy food for bubs once a week has now turned into like, between $25 and $40 when I go to Costco and just pick up these things in bulk. Like I said, if you wanna try cooking for your dog at home, I highly suggest speaking to a professional about it because really getting those ratios right of what the dog needs and making sure that it's balanced with supplements is really, really important because you could be malnourishing your dog unintentionally. And you know, people have studied this. Trust the people who have studied it. You can read a bunch of articles online, but if they're not reputable sources, then it's just bullshit anyway. And you can find anything online to support anything you think. So it gets really confusing and hard. Like when I was just flying blind, making their food at home, making it up as I go, you, I like I read one place that coconut oil is good for dogs, and then another place is like, don't give your dogs coconut oil, they'll sh their brains out and die. So like, it really helps to just talk to a professional about it, or, or you can you know fly blind and live with the anxiety of are they gonna shit their brains out and die. That's my advice. All right, let's get into it. This is a lot of chopping, it's a lot of steaming, and it's a lot of baking. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unpackage the tilapia. I buy it frozen, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, I buy two packets of it because again, I'm making it for two dogs. Icky basically gets double the recipe that Bubs does. So I unpackage the fish and put it onto baking sheets with parchment paper and I set the oven to about 400 degrees. And there is a specific temperature that I'm supposed to get the fish, but really I just wait till it's like golden brown and you can tell that it's cooked and that's how I do the fish. So let's preheat the oven and get that fish game going. Boom, two cooking sheets. Make some space. This is legitimately my least favorite part of making the food because it's, oh, purchase paper because it's cold and it's disgusting, hallelujah. One of the things you wanna look out for when it comes to feeding your dog fish is whether or not it's a kind of fish that has a high amount of merc mercury in it. Mer mercury, am I saying that right? Mercury. mercury in it. Tilapia does not because I think it's, for lack of a better word, a young fish. Like, I don't think tilapia lives very long in the ocean. I think it has a short, pathetic life as a bottom feeder. And um, all it has to look forward to is being consumed by an Instagram famous dog. <laughs> so, if you are gonna make like your own dog recipe, which I, again, I do not, I do not think that it's a good idea to go rogue and make your own plan. 
But if you do, just definitely look into whether or not the type of fish that you've chosen has a high level of mercury in it, especially if, you're, if it becomes your dog's primary protein source, because uh, that could end badly. It's about at this point that my fingers start feeling like Jack and the Atlantic, wondering why it is I try so hard for dogs that don't even say thank you. They bark while I'm vlogging and they poop in the house and they pee everywhere too. Ugh. Something's wrong with my oven. This keeps canceling. Like we literally can't start the oven once without it being like, mm, just kidding, I don't want to finish heating. Uh, five times, it does it like five times every time we try to turn the oven on. Like what is up with that? Okay, you can't really f up this fish part. I don't set a timer. At some point, I might smell it. That smell is enough for me to know it's done. And now while that cooks, I'm gonna start steaming the broccoli because I don't cut the broccoli. And that way, while the broccoli's steaming, I'm chopping something else that I can put in immediately after. I like to try and keep a good flow going because it can take for Never if you don't have a good workflow and I clean the dog food bowls if you don't clean your dog's bowl every day while you're feeding them food like this like bacteria can grow on it and they can get really sick so I'm gonna empty out their old dog food bowls put the broccoli on and start chopping Okay, so I make four cups of oatmeal to split between the boys, and with four cups of oatmeal, I boil it um, with eight cups of water. Yeah. I used to feed my dogs a grain-free diet because I heard that dogs don't really need grains, and then when I talked to the uh, dietitian, he said that they need grain, so. And there's a bunch of studies that people have done like with dogs to figure out what it is that they do need, which kind of makes me sad to think about because it's like, did some dogs go malnourished so that we could learn what dogs need for nourishment? But I just try not to think about it and just be grateful for the study. Veggies. Oh, Icky just got back from a walk of him seepy. Little boy in a big kitchen. Am I making your dinner, buddy? I love you. I love you, my little piggy. You're so sweet and seepy. Stay cool. Oh, my little piggy boy. Okay, now we're gonna check the broccoli. We're not gonna touch it with our bare hands because we'll get a third degree burn. Let's see if this is. <laughs> or not I like to use like a blunt object to check it because that's when you know it's soft as hell if it can slice through without being a blade blade so I take this butter knife and oh yep slides right in like a well lubed up we're not gonna finish that sentence so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it into a big vat of shit oh no I'm gonna weigh it out for bubs and I'm gonna put it into a bucket for Bob for icky Okay, so we are really close to being done. We added the oatmeal to the bowl, we weighed it out. Bubs gets 700 grams of oatmeal per week, and I think now's as good a time as any to check on the tilapia in the oven. And we put the zucchini to boil, or to steam. And now I'm chopping the carrots. Oh, tilapia's still cooking, glasses steaming. We're gonna let them stay in there. Oh, did you wanna see? They're, can you see? They're, they're not golden brown yet. I like to have them be a little bit golden brown. That's how I know they're cooked. Um, so I'm gonna finish chopping the carrots and swap them out with that zucchini when it's time. But we are nearing the end of this and it's not that hard. Like, once you get in the groove of it, put a podcast on, listen to the sip. Like, it's not that hard. Our dogs, 
are on this earth for such a short period of time and all they do is love us with every fiber of their being. So the least we can do is cook them some bottom feeder fish and oatmeal. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, Bobo? Yeah, he's just a little dog on a kitchen floor. Oh. Okay, now um, I just have the oatmeal and the broccoli in the boys' bowls. I'll start to mix it because you basically, you really should put it in a food processor, but I don't have a food processor. So the biggest part of this whole ordeal is that I have to hand mix this. And you wanna mix it well because you wanna make sure everything's evenly distributed. So I start mixing early because the oatmeal hardens, number one. Number two, the more in there the harder it is to mix it all up so i do it basically like layer by layer whenever i think to like oh i thought to i'm gonna mix it up so i just thought to so let's go you guessed it mix it up oh. this is a horrible transition Okay, I just got the urge to check the fish again. We're looking golden brown on the tips, and I think that's enough. I'm gonna call it on the fish, that way it's still moist, um, and it's cooked. See? Golden brown, tips of my fish fins. See? See? <laughs> you get it. That Cooked. Now we go back to the scale. The dietitian was like, do you have a scale at home that can measure grams? And I said, oh, please, we've all gone through a drug dealer phase. So you'll see this is super flaky and this fish you can just pulverize with a wooden spoon if you don't have a meat mixer. All right, guys, last but not least, the freaking carrots. These bitches is steamed. Let's see. Yes, our blunt object goes right through them. They are not al dente, they are dente. Hot. And now we mix. Okay, now that the mixing's done, I'm gonna plop them into, well, I have to just put ickies into his respective Pyrex cases to hold for the rest of the week. And they'll get a fresh serving of uh, food this evening and for the next seven days. And I think they love it. It makes them very happy. They know I'm making this food for them. It makes me really happy because I know that they're getting a good balanced diet with no weird additives and preservatives and it's not processed beyond processing and it just makes me feel good knowing that they feel good getting good food and that it's specifically tailored for them so um i hope you enjoyed watching me make bobo and nikki's dinner and now let's let them eat <laughs>